हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू लेट्स टूट अकाउंटेंसी इन आर प्रीवियस सेशन वी स्टडीड सम ऑफ द एक्टिविटी रेशियोज सच एस टोटल असेट्स फिक्स असेट्स एंड करंट असेट्स टर्न ओवर रेशियोज एंड ऑल्सो द कैपिटल एंड वर्किंग कैपिटल टर्न ओवर रेशियोज दीज रेशियोज हेल्प डज लर्न द वे अ कंपनी एम्प्लॉयज इट्स असेट्स एंड कैपिटल फॉर रनिंग इट्स ऑपरेशन एंड अर्निंग द मैक्सिमम पॉसिबल रेवेन्यू ऑल्सो एट द एंड ऑफ द प्रीवियस सेशन वी हैड डिस्कस दैट द वर्किंग कैपिटल टर्न ओवर रेशियो इज फर्दर सग्रीगेटेड इन टू इन्वेंट्री टर्न ओवर डेटर्स टर्न ओवर एंड क्रेटर्स टर्न ओवर सो लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड एंड एनालाइज दीज रेशियोज इन मोर डिटेल एंड टू लर्न मोर अबाउट रेशियो एनालिसिस डू सब्सक्राइब टू आर चैनल एंड इफ यू आर लुकिंग फॉर ऑनलाइन कोर्सेज डू चेक आउट आर वेबसाइट वेद आर मेनी कोर्सेज अवेलेबल एट वेरी अफोर्डेबल प्राइजेस नाउ लेट्स बिगिन दिस सेशन वेर वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न फ्यू मोर एक्टिविटी रेशियोज एज वेल एज डेटर्स एंड क्रेटर्स वेलोसिटी we will take an example that will help us to know these ratios better by understanding and calculating them along the way this is an income statement that gives us the details specifically about the gross profit component and also the average values of account receivables inventory and account payables are available here we have only focused on the basic operations of sales and purchases of goods which is essentially required for learning more about this last set of activity ratios Firstly we shall look into inventory turnover ratio which is also known as stock turnover ratio which shows the number of times a company has sold or consumed or replaced its inventory in a year it is calculated by dividing cost of goods sold by average inventory average inventory is the average of opening and closing inventory so this ratio establishes a relationship between cost of goods sold during the year and average inventory held during the year it measures the efficiency with which the firm utilizes or manages its inventory basically it indicates how fast the inventory is sold or used in case of manufacturing firms there are three types of inventories that is raw materials work in progress and finished goods so this ratio helps us to study the movement of inventory through the production cycle for finished goods the same formula is used where the average inventory of finished goods will be considered the firm and the analyst might also be interested to know the efficiency with which the firm converts its raw material into working progress and working progress into finished goods so the raw material inventory turnover ratio is calculated by dividing raw material consumed by average raw materials inventory and the working progress inventory turnover ratio is equal to cost of production divided by average wip inventory Let's calculate inventory turnover ratio using this example. Here the cost of goods sold is 85000 divided by the average inventory which is directly given as 55000. Average inventory value can also be derived by taking the average of opening inventory 50000 and closing inventory of 60000 which comes to 55000. And the inventory turnover ratio comes to 1.55 times which means 1.55 times the inventory is sold or consumed or replaced in a year the target ratio differs for every industry depending upon the standard demand and supply requirements however a higher ratio is an indicator of better sales and efficient inventory management whereas a low ratio shows the opposite in the form of inventory stocking up in warehouses due to poor sales or slow moving or obsolete inventory moving on to the receivables or data turnover ratio This ratio measures the efficiency with which the management is managing its account receivables. This ratio can be found out by dividing the credit sales by the average accounts receivable. The term account receivables include debtors and bills receivable. And the average can be computed by taking an average of account receivables in the beginning and at the end of the year. This ratio tells us the number of times a company can collect its account receivables in a year. So in this example credit sales are 150000 and average account receivable is given as 37500 giving us an account receivable ratio of 4 times that is 4 times in a year the receivables are collected this ratio indicates the speed with which the company can turn its credit sales into cash which affects the liquidity of the firm so the higher the ratio the better it is a high receivable turnover ratio indicates that the debts are collected rapidly highlighting company's efficiency in collecting its account receivables 
as well as the quality of sales of the company. If the ratio is low, then the company may need to change its credit policies to ensure the quick collection of cash from the customers. For further understanding, let us study the concept of receivables or data's velocity. This term refers to the time period a company takes to make collection from data's. So it is also known as data's collection period. The formula is 12 months or 52 weeks or 365 days as the case may be divided by the data's turnover ratio. In this example, say if we want the collection period in months, then 12 months divided by the receivable turnover ratio of 4 times gives the collection period of 3 months. So the company takes almost 3 months to collect account receivables or we can say that on an average 3 months of credit is allowed to the debtors. A shorter collection period indicates prompt payment whereas a longer period signals inefficient credit collection by the firm. The credit policy should neither be too liberal or too restrictive. If it is too liberal then it will result in more blockage of funds and increased chances of bad debts due to delays and defaults in payment. And if it is too restrictive, then there is a possibility of lower sales causing lower profits. Lastly, let's move on to payable turnover ratio, which is quite similar to receivable turnover ratio. It measures the number of times a company pay off its account payables in a year. The ratio is calculated by dividing net credit purchases by average account payables. Account payables include trade creditors and bills payable. Now can you guess how do we find out average account payable? Yes, it is the average of account payables at the beginning of the year and at the end of the year. Here in this example, credit purchases are 95,000 divided by average account payable given as 16,000 which gives us a payable turnover ratio of 5.94 times. This denotes 5.94 times a year company pay off its account payable. Also with the help of payable turnover ratio, we can compute payable velocity that is average payment period. It calculates the time period a company takes to pay off its creditors or accounts payable. So the average payment period is equal to 12 months or 52 weeks or 365 days divided by payable turnover ratio. So in this example, if we want payment period, say in months, then we can calculate by dividing 12 months by 5.94 times the payable turnover ratio. That gives us the average period of approximately 2 months. So we can say payables are being paid in approx 2 months or we can say that the creditors are allowing a credit period of 2 months. The payable turnover ratio and average payment period indicate the speed with which payments for credit purchases are made to the creditors and bills payable. A higher payable turnover ratio and lower payment period signify quick and regular payment to the suppliers, thus enhancing the credit worthiness of the company, which may result in favorable terms of the business in the future. However, a very favorable ratio to this effect also shows that business is not taking full advantage of credit facilities which can be allowed by the creditors. So the ratio has to be balanced depending upon the type of industry in which company operates and depending upon how much credit period is generally allowed in that type of industry. Finally, friends, here we are done with all the activity ratios. We studied various turnover ratios like total assets, fixed assets, current assets, capital and working capital turnover ratios. These ratios help us to evaluate how efficiently a firm utilizes its assets to earn the maximum possible revenue and that is the reason they are also known as efficiency or performance or turnover ratios. Further, we studied inventory, receivables and payable turnover ratios which are relevant to examine the liquidity of an organization. Also, understanding the average collection period that is data's velocity and average payment period that is creditor's velocity help us to evaluate and compare the credit period firm receives from the supplier with the credit period it offers to its customer. The firm can also compare the credit period offered in that particular industry to decide on its policy and can strive to improve its ratio by increasing its operational efficiency and business performance. So that's all for this session. In the next session, we shall start with the last type of ratios that is the profitability ratios, which are further divided into several categories 
which we shall learn in our upcoming sessions. Friends, if you found this video useful, then do like, share and comment. And yes, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get updates of upcoming videos. And do visit our website www.letstude.com where there are many online courses available at very affordable price. So see you all in the next session. Till then, keep watching, keep learning. Thank you.